Hey guys, uh, what's up? This is G for T. Um, we're here in South Orange County, beautiful, beautiful Laguna Niguel area, and I'm here with my buddy Mitch, and I'm also talking with Ray. He is a minister out in the Kentucky area, and uh, you saw our video last night about uh, suicide, and you wanted to come forth and talk about your story um, about ministers across the country are either quitting or they're being let go. There's some sort of attack going on right now with uh, pastors all across the country. What is going on? Well, I wrote a book called Fallen Pastor, Finding Restoration in a Broken World. And the statistic, I, I fell myself um, three and a half years ago in the ministry. I was a pastor. I've been pastoring for eight years. And I uh, fell to, due to adultery. And I started asking questions like, why are so many pastors falling? The statistic that really caught my eye was 1,500 pastors a month leave the ministry due to uh, conflict, um, uh, adultery, or ministry for moral failure, or burnout. And I thought, it shouldn't be that way. Something is really, really wrong in our culture. And I started calling fallen pastors because I wanted to know how I could get better or what happened to me and make sense of it. I mean, I, I never always tell people I don't want to justify what I did. I don't want to justify the sin that I committed, but what was, was there some kind of cause around me that might have contributed to my fall? And so I started talking to fallen pastors, I started talking to counselors, church leaders, all kinds of people, and I found out there were a lot of common threads to why ministers fall. And I was surprised by the, the things I found, and I've also found out there's not a lot of people out there who help fallen ministers. So even though the churches may have resources, um, when a pastor makes a mistake, like a lot of men do, or you have relationship issues, what you're finding out is um, they kind of get kicked to the wayside and there's no real support mechanisms for them. Or are we seeing a situation where we have a trending situation where the breakup of the family is happening, um, where pastors are being targeted? I know my audience is really hip on the idea of pastors being used by the government. I know, I believe they're mandated reporters by the state to report uh, abuse. Uh, a lot of people are feeling that they can't trust their pastors anymore, and maybe that may be part of the reason they're being targeted. What's your thoughts on that? Well, here's my thoughts on it, and what I've seen personally as far as pastors leaving the ministry is that pastors are getting kicked out. When as soon as their congregation finds out that they have been immoral, or a lot of times it's been you know pornography found on their computer, or it's being that they've been with another woman, they get pretty much pushed to the wayside. In a small fraction of the cases, it's they they get asked to go to counseling, but most of the time they get it's like we shoot our wounded, and it's from denomination to denomination to denomination, and. Uh, there's no real help for them out there, and I don't know whether it's the church doesn't know how to help them or they just they want to be done with it. You know, we are in a society in our churches where we pretty much hire the guy as a hired hand, and then when he's when he fails, we we kick him out like a CEO. CEO why, fails, why are these churches uh, Why are these churches performing these excommunications so rapidly when it seems as if that would be not in the spirit of of, of Christ Jesus where he would say hey forgiveness you know rehabilitation what is what is the mechanism that's calling causing this to happen well Galatians 6 1 says that we are to restore the brother who falls and I'm not saying restore him to ministry but we just ought to restore him to a fellowship of believers and pursue him you know and just say what you what you've done is wrong so why are we doing this I don't know. I, I think that we've been taught for uh, the last several decades, we've been taught that if someone has some kind of high-profile sin, whether it's a any kind of church leader or even if it's just a member, that that person is unworthy to be in the kind of the clique anymore. Ray, and, if, you, if, if you don't mind, would you mind going over your personal story, just um, you know, maybe the short version of it, what happened to you and what, what exactly happened? And I'll tell you this, and my story is one of thousands that are out there because I, I get contacted at least twice weekly from an email from a guy who tells me their story, and I'll tell them this is the exact thing I lived through. Um, I was head of church for eight years, and things were going well. I didn't have the best relationship with my wife at the time, but it wasn't awful. Um, but you know, we were, you know, we were 
we got along okay. And right along that time, uh, my parents had separated. My dad died in an accident. And then he, my, a year later, my mom died in a car accident. Um, shortly after that, we got some worse news. And then I, I just, we were having conflict in the church. Um, I felt like there were some unrealistic high expectations of me. Um, you should have high expectations of your pastor. You should expect your pastor not to commit adultery. You should expect your pastor to be a, a man who's moral. But there were really expectations that were too high. I think the Barna Group says that churches expect their pastors to juggle uh, 16 tasks at once. And I was getting to the point where I was getting really burned out. And after Dad died, Mom died, and the church was going through conflict, I was just I was ready just to kind of leave. I was looking to get out and go somewhere else. But I was not looking to commit adultery, I can tell you that. And my, uh, my, my wife and I weren't getting along really well. And about that time, I started talking to, having a conversation with a woman in the church who happened to be my wife's best friend. And we were just having friendly conversations. She was going through a divorce. We started texting each other. That escalated, and we crossed the line. And when the church found out, I was, you know, they expelled me, and I got kicked out. Now, my I've, wife did. I've, I've talked to pastors before, and uh, women tend to throw themselves at pastors. That's what I've heard is, you know, because you're up there in front, and then they'll come for a counseling session. And many, many times you're having to deflect uh, women throwing themselves at you. So that is true, huh? Well, I've, she didn't throw herself at me. I can put it that way. I've I've heard that too. I'd never have it. I'd never had that happen to me before. But I do know pastors who have been candid with me and said, "Yeah, I've had a lot of, especially in the bigger churches. They say, yeah, you have to watch yourself because women do throw themselves at you.' So yeah, wow. guys have, they have to watch what it is because it's a it's a position of power. And you know whether you're a um, a politician um, or you have a lot of followers that. You know, you will have people throw themselves at you just, you know, not because my of who you are, but, yeah, because of your position of power. My pastor buddy said that the way it happened was they'd call you for a counseling session, mm -hmm. and then you're in there talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, and usually the conversation was, um, I'm having bad thoughts about uh, a pastor, and then oh. you're it. That's how he said it happens. Is That's that, interesting, yeah. Is that, have you well, heard my, that before? No, that had not happened. Actually, had not happened to me before. Uh, okay. Before Alice and I, she's my current wife, and I had met. Um, she and I, you know, we had a lot of things. I was weak, she was weak, and you know, we fed off that. And that's what a lot of pastors who fall will tell you. They were both in a vulnerable position, and they just—that's how things happen. And um, that's how it happens outside the ministry too. And then you let's know, let's are, let's fast forward to their. They obviously fired you, mm -hmm. and then how did that process go? Uh, well, they, I got kicked out of the parsonage. My wife filed for divorce, and it was a very bitter time. Uh, uh, my wife and I currently, my the woman I was seeing, you know, we, we were in love with each other, and so we decided to be together. But I decided at that time, I, after all the fallen pastors I talked to, I said, something went wrong, and what wrong went wrong with me? And I, Something's wrong in this country if this many men are falling, and... I know I didn't go looking for this. And when I talked to all these guys, they all said, you will never make up with your former church, ever. And I set out to prove that wrong. And in the community where I live now, I still live in the community where I fell, I've made up with about 80% of the former church people. And I've been able to make inroads with most of them. And I've, I've been able to break down the reason why men fall. What, so, and what is it? Well, there's several reasons. You know, One is a lot of guys just have poor... I think the main reason is they have poor relationship with their spouse. I think most guys, most ministers chase the ministry instead of chasing after Christ. We, The church in America, I don't really think it has a lot to do with what Christ intended. I think it has to do with programs, and I think it has to do with building up a structure instead of building up the person of Jesus Christ. And a lot of pastors play the numbers game, or they play the game of um, you know, getting people in the seats and they're not preaching the word. And it's about would, making you know, the money, isn't it? No, it's not. You know, and if you don't get people in the pews, you know, it's not making money at all. And so the, their first mistress is the church. And they're, you know, when the phone rings and they have to go do something for the church, they're ignoring their family and they're ignoring their wife. And now they're married to the ministry. And that's very difficult. So they lose touch with their spouse. And their spouse kind of takes the back seat. And that's very, very difficult. So that's the, one of the major things that I try to tell guys. You can't chase after the ministry. You have to chase after your wife. You still have to pursue so her. So I know there are some churches. Well, actually, the Catholic Church, 
uh, has unmarried priests, do you would you see a benefit in having a pastor who is single or not married? Uh, no. Well, I, th I think that should be his decision. I, I think even the Catholic Church is starting to look into and review that policy. Uh, I think that should be up to that pastor. Um, you know, if he wants, if that's his preference, then he should. But I, I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue because I'm is... meeting a lot of Christian men that are in their 40s. They've pretty much swore off women because they don't make a lot of income, and they're actually feeling like they want to just be single for Jesus. And they're right. not pastors, but they're like, you know what? Forget women. I'm just going to be focus my life on God, and I'm not going to have sex. I'm not going to have a relationship. And I don't know. Should there be room for that in well, American that's... life? Because that is a, you're an oddball if you choose that. Well, sure. I mean, if if you what Paul says, you know, don't be like or be be like me unless you be tempted by the flesh and just marry if you have to. Yeah, but, they uh, say that in the Bible, but the way yeah. if in reality. You're kind of a weirdo if you choose yeah. that. But yeah, but if you're living for Christ and if that's the lifestyle that you want to choose, then then by all means, you know, if you can purely dedicate yourself to Christ without a relationship, go for it. But man, I can't. So. And then really quick, what are the other uh, issues? Why you think pastors are falling in major significance in America? Isolation uh, is a huge one. I think pastors get isolated. I don't think they. Uh, want to reach out for help I don't I don't think they have friends or mentors also I think high expectations I, like I said I think we should have high expectations for pastors we should expect things out of our leaders but we should burn them out often, yeah churches often place their pastors on a pedestal too high of a pedestal and they think unrealistic things of their pastor and they think they can do everything and I think pastors also have a high too high of an expectation of themselves sometimes and um, I think a lot of guys are just judgmental. I was judgmental before I fell. Um, you know, I, I thought the whole world was black and white. I thought, you know, everything fit nicely into a box. And I, I thought every sinner I saw was just, you know, they need to fit into that same little box. And um, there's certain attitudes that a lot of pastors have that, that really don't work. And I think I, I was talking to somebody the other day about this. I, after I fell, I was looking for a church. And I was... Allison and I were, the, you know, the woman, I, my, my lovely wife now, and we met with the pastor, and I said, can we join this church? He said, well, you can, but you won't be able to speak, you won't be able to teach. He said, and I don't recognize your marriage because I don't believe God recognizes your marriage. Oh, God. And I, well, wow. the, the interesting thing was, six months later, he committed adultery. And uh, and I, I remember no one was reaching out to him, he wouldn't talk to anybody, but the first person that he would listen to was me. So that's the kind of ministry I run at my website, fallenpastor.com. I blog regularly. and Well, we'll pass that. We'll pass your website and your book along to the audience. What is your opinion about, um, you know, so many fallen pastors, what is your opinion about maybe women being part of the equation? Uh, since the feminist movement, we have a lot of women that are, you know, into what can I get out of marriage rather than what, how can I sacrifice for the marriage? How much do women play a role in the high divorce rates, the breakup of the family, and with the fall, fall, fallen pastors? Well, I think what's really interesting in the church is the high participation numbers in the church are due to women. I think guys aren't even present in the church anymore. Uh, if you go to a lot of churches anymore, if you go on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night or a Wednesday night, it's a higher population of women. And I do believe that men are not being spiritual leaders in the home anymore. As far as the rest of it, I know I, I really believe if men would take spiritual responsibility in the home to do what they're supposed to do, that we wouldn't have a lot of the problems that we're having with divorce or family problems or family issues that we're having today. That's interesting because I'm uh, I notice my audience tends to blame the feminist w movement and women for a lot of the breakup of the family, but they don't really necessarily understand that maybe the men are at fault because they're supposed to be the spiritual head of the household, right? Yeah, and, you know, and I, I know a few feminists, and um, you know, I don't promote a feminist agenda at all, but. I do know some lighter-hearted feminists who would say, you know what, at least at least we're trying to do something, you know. And I don't agree necessarily agree with the way they're doing it, but I do know a lot of women who were involved in church where they where the men should be involved in church. So, okay, so the inspiration for the book was really your personal experience, and now you're getting out there trying to reconnect with your um, your your old uh, church. 
and you're trying to reach out and help other pastors. Is that basically what's happening with you right now? That's right. I mean, really what I had was there were very few resources, and there's not a whole lot out there for guys who fall. And, you know, if you think about it, if 500 guys a month out of that 1,500 are falling because of moral reasons, then we have thousands of men out there who are suffering and don't have anyone to reach out to. And they don't have a tool to put in their hand or a book they can read or a website they can go to or, you know, just, they just need someone to reach out to. And, and that's kind of what I was trying to do. Interesting. So many pastors are being taken out of the equation definitely interesting what is causing it thanks uh ray for being on the show thanks and i appreciate it buddy take care all right you too you did great young man we'll talk to you later thanks mitch Bye.